Welcome back, everyone. Today, we're really, like, really diving deep into, into the fifth management Fochi by Guy W. Wallace. Ah, uh, a classic. Right. You know how we're always on the lookout for practical management advice, the kind of stuff you can actually use? Absolutely. This book is chock full of it. It cuts right to the chase, no fluff. Exactly. And by the time we're done with this deep dive, you'll have a whole arsenal of, like, strategies and insights to seriously up your management game. It's all about getting to the core of what actually makes a difference. Totally. So Wallace, he lays out five core areas he calls FOCI. Kind of like a GPS for your management style. Yes. Guiding you to success. I like that. We've got alignments, processes, practices, resources, and then his big one, avoiding foo-foo. Ah, uh, yes, foo-foo. I know, right? When I hear foo-foo, I think of all those management fads. The ones that sound good in theory, but never actually work in practice. Exactly. Like, remember that time we tried to implement? Okay, let's not name names. Right. Good point. But you know what I mean. So before we all fall for the next big management friend, let's break down these foche and see what Wallace has to say. First up, alignments. Sounds simple enough. Right. But of course, Wallace has to throw us a curveball. What's that? It's not just about keeping customers happy, which is what I always thought. It's much bigger than that. He outlines nine stakeholder groups. Nine. Oh. Customers aren't even at the top. Oh, wow. Okay. This is already blowing my mind. So who's at the top? Well, Wallace, he says that sometimes government regulations really actually matter more than what customers want. Interesting. And then there are shareholders who let's face it, are calling the shots. The ones signing the checks. Exactly. He even says that ignoring the needs of your employees and suppliers, those internal stakeholders... Can backfire. Big time. Like trying to build a house without... Uh, a foundation. Exactly. Okay, so we've covered alignments. Next up is processes. And this one, immediately I'm thinking efficiency, streamlining, you know... The usual suspects. Yeah, but then Wallace, he throws us another curveball. He does love his curveballs, doesn't he? He does. So what's the deal with processes? Are you telling me we shouldn't strive for efficiency? He's saying we need to be smart about it. Obsessing over perfection, reaching those Six Sigma levels, it's not always the best use of resources. Okay, so you're saying sometimes it's better to just live with a few inefficiencies. Exactly. You gotta weigh the cost of fixing something versus the actual benefits. It's about finding that balance. That reminds me of this one time. Let's save that story for later. Right, of course. So we've got alignments processes and now for the juicy stuff <laughs> practices Ooh, this should be good wallace gets into the nitty-gritty of how we work and let me tell you he doesn't hold back lay it on me he tackles this big question are the best individual performers always cut out to be managers what does he say well i think we both know that sometimes the people who are amazing at their jobs are terrible managers exactly so true and wallace he confirms it. Tell me more. He says, just because you're a rock star at your specific task doesn't mean you can manage people, delegate effectively, or deal with all those... You know, like, interpersonal dynamics. Yeah, all that messy human stuff. It's a totally different skill set. It's like assuming a star athlete will automatically be a great coach. Yes. Perfect analogy. <laughs> they might understand the game, but... Leading a team is a whole other ball game. Exactly. And while we're talking about assumptions... Wallace also questions this whole more data is always better mentality. Oh, interesting. You mean like blindly implementing best practices from other companies? Yes. Yeah. Just because it worked for Google doesn't mean it'll work for it's everyone else. Exactly. It's like trying to fit a square peg into a round hole. Yes. You get me. Okay. We've covered alignments, processes, practices. Don't forget resources. We all wish we had more time, more budget, more magic wands. Right. But Wallace says it's not about having a ton of resources. It's about having the right ones. Yes, and using them effectively. He even challenges this idea of downsizing as a cure-all. You mean like a quick fix to cut costs? Exactly. He argues that it can actually hurt the company in the long run. Interesting. How so? Well, he says that while you might save some money in the short term... You could lose valuable expertise. Exactly. And then there's the hit to employee morale. Makes sense. So it's not always the best solution. Fascinating. Okay, before we get to the grand finale of Waiting Foo Foo, let's pause for a second. Have any aha moments come up for you so far? 
ready to jump back in. Oh, absolutely. Especially since we're finally getting to the whole foo-foo thing. Ah, uh, yes, foo-foo. It's like, we all know those management fads exist. Right, but how do we actually avoid them? Exactly. How do we not get fooled? Well, think of foo-foo as those things that sound amazing. But don't actually work. Yeah, like those gadgets you see on infomercials. That promise you the world, but end up in the back of your junk drawer. Exactly. Okay, so for some concrete examples, let's talk about alignments. Okay. Remember how we talked about considering all stakeholders? Not just customers, right? Right. Well, a classic example of foo-foo here is that phrase. The customer is always right. Bingo! Yeah, I've heard that one a million times. Well, it's important to make customers happy following that saying blindly. It can backfire. Big time. So it's more about striking a balance. Exactly. You have to keep your company's goals and resources in mind, too. Makes sense. Another foo-foo fallacy about alignments. This idea that all shareholders only care about short-term profits. Oh, yeah. It's easy to think that way. It's a huge oversimplification. Many shareholders are invested for the long haul. They care about sustainability and ethics and all that? Absolutely. Okay. So what about processes? Any foo-foo lurking there? Plenty. One big one is this obsession with best practices. Oh, you mean like copying whatever other companies are doing? Exactly. If it worked for them, it'll work for us. Right. But it rarely works out that way. Every organization is different. What works for one might be a disaster for another. It's like trying to use a, what's that say? <sighs> a square peg in a round hole. Yes. Another process-related foo-foo. Yeah. This belief that every single process needs to be constantly optimized. Striving for that Six Sigma perfection. Exactly. Sometimes it's just not worth the time and effort. You got to pick your battles. Exactly. Okay, now let's dig into practices. Ooh, I'm ready. A common foo-foo trap here is this idea that feedback should always be immediate. Oh, interesting. So you're saying like right after someone finishes a task. Yes. But bombarding people with feedback right away can be too much. Information overload. Exactly. Imagine trying to process feedback while you're still working on something. Yeah, that would be overwhelming. It's about finding that sweet spot, giving people time to reflect, but also keeping the feedback fresh. So what's the right amount of time to wait? It depends on the situation and the person, really. Another foo-foo practice, this assumption that informal learning is always better than formal training. Oh, you mean like just picking things up as you go? Exactly. While informal learning is great, sometimes you need a more structured approach. Especially with really complex topics. Exactly. Okay, moving on to resources. Okay. One resource-related foo-foo is this belief that downsizing always leads to greater efficiency. Oh, the trim the fat mentality. Exactly. But as we discussed, it can have some serious downsides. Loss of expertise, lower morale. Right. It's short-term thinking that can hurt you in the long run. Ouch, yeah. And while we're talking about things that seem appealing but might not be, let's talk about data. Data? Like the big data craze. Exactly. Collecting tons of data without a clear plan to use it is useless. It's like hoarding ingredients without a recipe. Perfect analogy. Data is only powerful if you know what to do with it. This has been so eye-opening. We've covered so much ground on Fufu. So what are some overall strategies to avoid these traps? It boils down to skepticism. Don't believe everything you hear. Even if it's from a management guru. Especially then. Question everything, ask for evidence, and don't be afraid to go against the grain. Love it. So are there any resources you recommend for staying informed? Like organizations or... Absolutely. One organization I love is ISPI, the International Society for Performance Improvement. I've heard of them. They're all about evidence-based practices. And for quality management, check out ASQ, the American Society for Quality. Quality management is so essential. It is. And for anyone in learning and development, I recommend LDA, the Learning Development Accelerator. Okay, those are great. What about online resources? Any favorites? One I use all the time is the resource portal for online research methods. For all our research needs. Exactly. What about books besides the ones by Pfeffer and Sutton? Thinking Fast and Slow by Daniel Kahneman is brilliant. It's a classic. And The Fifth Discipline by Peter Senge is essential reading for understanding systems thinking. Systems thinking so important for managers. It is. And one more, Radical Candor by Kim Scott. It's a great guide for giving and receiving feedback effectively. Feedback is such a crucial skill. It is. This deep dive has been amazing. I'm already feeling more confident about avoiding foo-foo. But before we wrap up this section, 
Any final thoughts for our listeners? You know, if there's one thing I hope really sticks with our listeners, it's that healthy skepticism. Don't just buy into every management trend that comes along. Oh, I'm totally with you there. I'm already questioning everything I thought I knew. That's what we want. Think like a scientist, right? right? Ask the tough questions. Look for the evidence. Don't be afraid to challenge the so-called experts. Love it. What works in one place might not work somewhere else. It's all about adapting and being willing to learn and grow. Being a lifelong learner, right? Exactly. You know, it's funny because earlier we were talking about the wisdom of the crowds and how just because everyone's doing something doesn't make it right. Oh, absolutely. Popularity isn't a measure of effectiveness. Like those best practices we talked about? Oh, right. What works for one company could be a disaster for another. Exactly. It reminds me of that saying, one man's trash is another man's treasure. Yes. And, you know, it's the same with all those online reviews. Oh, for sure. They can be helpful, but... You got to take them with a grain of salt. Exactly. So how do we separate the good information from all the noise? Be a critical thinker. Don't just skim the surface. Dig deeper. Look for the evidence. Seek out different perspectives. And question everything. Exactly. This has been so insightful. I feel like I have a whole new toolkit for approaching management. That's great to hear. So as we wrap up this deep dive on the fifth management foci, What's one final piece of advice you'd give to managers? You know, something to really take away and apply right away. Embrace curiosity. Never stop learning, exploring, questioning. Management is always changing. So true. And remember, it's all about people. Inspire them, build trust, and empower them to do great things. Beautifully said. And listeners, we want to hear from you. What foo-foo have you fallen for? What are you going to do differently after this deep dive? Let us know. Until next time, keep diving deep into those management challenges.